Well, good morning. It's Tom Padula uh, from Tom Padula TV on YouTube and uh, in Senia Booksellers. And this is Sunday, the 29th of May, 2022. And uh, it's a lesson presentation number 38 that deals with um, the Inferno. We've done, uh, I've done Kanti 1 to 34 and fin it, that finishes the work. Uh, each Kanto was uh, read and explained, well, you know, presented really, uh, because there's a lot more work to be done for each canto by individual um, listeners to these programs and uh, to these presentations. And uh, next week I'll uh, do lesson 39, uh, and after that I will uh, concentrate on Purgatorio. We start another journey, uh, Purgatorio journey. Welcome to Assunta Lombardi. Uh, so this morning we do lesson presentation number 38 and it'll be about uh, last week I covered uh, Kanti 1 to 14 we'll start with 15 uh, a bit of an explanation uh, relating a summary of of the actual canto and uh, then I'll show you the Gustave Doré's um, uh, illustrations of each canto uh, we'll do my best I mean you know, it's not, this is not a great studio here, <laughs> but I'm not going to apologise. We do what we can when we can uh, with what we've got. So the second uh, section after the half hour, I'll go to Amica Poesia uh, and I'll do two poems from my books, uh, Poetry My Friend, Amica Poesia. They are bilingual texts. I have the texts, both of them. Uh, which is good, so people can access those from insegna.com. And then uh, I've decided this morning to actually, I've met a person called Sandro Lemigrante. Sandro Lemigrante, I've known him because he's been on Italian radio here in Melbourne and uh, quite a character. I uh, met him at Federazione Lugano and I interviewed him and I, I thought, well, well, we'll do this in two parts and I'll also have some songs as well that we've done before but you know that's how it is uh, it's good to re revise uh, certain songs after a while okay so that's uh, where we're at now uh, last night yeah last night uh, was a good night at Federazione Lugana uh, with the uh, dinner dance on uh, and with special foods etc you know, music, uh, good company, fantastic. And uh, I also met um, the president of the Lucani d'Australia. Uh, his name is Gio Di Giacomo. And uh, again, but you know, I'll you know I'll introduce him more in the in the history section because that's where it belongs. Now, the the other thing that that happened was that. Today, we have ling languages and cultures there at Federazione Lugana with me. So I'll be meeting people at Federazione Lugana. If you want to see me and be part of it, come there, be there by about uh, quarter past three, and I'll start precisely at 3.30 and go to five o'clock. So depending on how many people arrive, what they want to do, I'll have some, something ready relating to languages and culture but if you have a, an iphone or a samsung uh, you know bring it along because um, then uh, we can go over some of the uh, podcasts that are produced and we can actually check them and see what else we can do uh, as time goes on anna paolo welcome uh, now this is um, eleven twenty-eight. So what, what are we going to do about uh, Dante? I thought that with Dante Alighieri, there are also the other works, his minor works, and I mentioned them last, uh, last week. I said that um, the, the minor works of Dante Alighieri uh, are important, and uh, especially, especially the one that I, I like, you know, that I've used in the past, is La Vita Nuova of Dante Alighieri. Uh, La Vita Nuova has got some beautiful, uh, some excellent um, paragraphs, little poems, 
uh, that Dante wrote when he was a uh, young, young person. And, uh, of course, the study that we undertake in this morning is uh, the study of, of the sins that can be committed uh, in life. For example, uh, the, you know, in the, in the, in the Kanti, you, we deal with uh, people like, uh, you know, the people who, uh, for no fault of their own, are not baptised, uh, that, you know, going back to Dante in the Middle Ages and Christianity at that time. And still, I think uh, a lot of this is still very relevant today. So, then they sort of illusoriosi, i golosi, gli avari, i prodigi, gli racconti, gli accidiosi, so violence, you know, all those sort of things. Heretics, the violence, the, the murderous predators, suicides, uh, the wasteful people, the blasphemous, the sodomites, the usurers. And then we go into the eighth circle of hell, and they cut the ruffiani, seduttori, adulatori, simoniaci, indovini, barattieri, ipocriti, ladri, consiglieri, fraudolenti, seminatori di discordia, falsari. And then the big ones are, uh, you know, the tradi traditori, dei parenti, uh, i di di traditori de 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 della pace, del paese proprio, uh, i traditori di Dio. These are the, the, the sins that can be committed. I'm not sure whether there are any more, but it's 11.30 and I'm going to start. Here we go. Here we go. So, but before I do, oh no, I'll let you have a look at, um, at Canto 15, all right? There it is, there. See that? What do you see there? That is, those are the flames. Let's have a look. And um, yeah, I'll, well, I can't read there. I have to do it sideways, this way. I'll do it this way, okay? Taking their way upon one of the mounds by which the, the streamlet spoken of in the last canto was embanked, and having gone so far that they could no longer have discerned the forest if they had turned around to look for it, they meet the troop of spirits that come along the sand by the side of the pier. There are, these are they who have done violence to nature. These are the people. And amongst them, Dante distinguishes Brunetto Latini, who had been formerly his master with whom, turning a little backwards, he holds a discourse which he occupies the remainder of this canto. So he talks to Brutet, Brunetto Latini. So that's canto 15, the main one. Uh, the main one here. Now, any more pictures? No, no pictures. Well, canto 16. I can't believe this. They don't have pictures here. What's going on? Uh, there are more here. Oh, well, we'll do, we'll do this one here. Okay? Well, I have to. I'll read it for you. Journeying along the pier which crosses the sand, they are now so near the end of it as to hear the noise of the stream falling into the eighth circle when, when meet the spirits of three military men who, judging Dante from his dress to be a countryman of theirs, entreat him to stop. He complies and speaks with them. The two poets then reach the place where the water descends, being the termination of the, this third compartment in the seventh circle. And here Virgil, having thrown down into the hollow a cord wherewith Dante was girt, they behold at the signal of a monstrous and horrible figure come swimming up to them. That's unbelievable. The, the English there is, this is an old book. You know, you have to interpret the English here. Well, we keep going anyway because um, that's how it happens. Okay, Canto 17. The monster Girion is described to whom, while Virgil is speaking, in order that he may carry them both down to the new circle, 
Dante, by permission, goes a little further along the edge of the void to describe the third species of sinners contained in this compartment, namely those who have done violence to art. And then, return to his master, they both descend, seated on the back of, uh, of uh, Gerionte. I think it's Gerionte. In Italian, Girion, they call it. Oh, here they are. These are the pictures. Let's have a look. Let's have a look. There you are. Let's see that. A pitch is a thousand words. That's um, Virgil speaks to the uh, to to this uh, monstrous animal, and uh, because he says you have to take, it takes them down, and they, that's how they descend. They descend into the further down in hell. Okay. Eighteen. The poet describes the situation and, and form of the eight circle divided into ten gulfs which contain as many different descriptions of fraudulent sinner, sinners. But in the present canto, uh, he treats only of two sorts. The first is of those who either for their own pleasure or for that of another have seduced any woman from her duty and there are these are scourged of demons in the first gulf. The other sort is of flatterers who in the second gulf are condemned to remain immersed in filth. So this is, this is the way, this is the pictures. Notice they're not dressed, they're all in the nude. Okay, you know, hell is supposed to be a violent place. So there you are. Then, uh, Dante, they look down the river. See that? And those are the two uh, sides. Okay, so that's that. Now this one here, when he speaks to the, the three people that, that he was talking about, Again, I repeat, I have the book, The Inferno, at, um, at Insegna, uh, with a lot of notes. And the, these pictures here from a very big book. The, this is a very big book. Uh, and, you know, I've only got a few cop couple of copies now left. One of them I always keep for me. And the other, you know, whoever gets there first will get it. Argument. They, this is Canto 19 now, and I'm going to stand on that whilst I read. They come to the third gulf wherein are punished those who have been guilty of simony. Simony, you know, they're still from the church. These are fixed with the head downwards in certain apertures so that no more of them than the legs appear without and on the soles of their feet are seen burning flames. Dante is taken down by his guide into the bottom of the gulf and, the, and there finds Pope Nicholas V, whose evil deeds, together with those of other pontiffs, are bitterly reprehended. They stole from the church. They gave it to the relatives. Virgil then uh, carries him up against to the arch, which affords them a passage over the following gulf. Uh, so what, let's happen, what happens here now. Canto 20, okay? I think it's the same as before. The poet relates to the, pu the punishment of such as presumed while living to predict future events. It is to have their faces reversed and set the contrary way on their limbs so that being deprived of the power to see before, the, uh, they are constrained ever to walk backwards. Amongst these, Virgil points out to him Amphiara, Raus, Theresius, Aruns and Manto, from the mention of whom he takes occasion to speak of the original Mantua, that's where Virgil comes from, together with several others who had practised the arts of divination and astrology. So when, when you try to 
look at the future. Uh, you, you can, you know, you can have an effect on people, uh, and uh, that's a sin, according to Dante. Uh, Canto 21, still in the eighth circle, which bears the name of Malibolge, they look down from the bridge that passes over its fifth gulf upon the batteries or public per percolators. These are planted in a like lake of boiling pitch and guarded by demons, to whom Virgil, leaving Dante apart, presents himself. A license being obtained to pass onwards, both pursue their way. Wow. <laughs> this English is unbelievable. Unbelievable. Here we are. These are the pictures. See, the demons are here and the souls are inside those uh, under the water. If anyone dares to come up, uh, they, uh, you know, they push them down or uh, strike them with their lances. And then I think three of them fall, th a couple of them fall into the pit. Into the pitch. <laughs> uh, here we are. There. And Virgil speaks to one of them and says, you're going to help us out? We have to cross this river. How do we do it? How do we do it? And they, they actually do it. It's not... Because they've got, uh, you know, God on their side. Virgil and Dante proceed accompanied by the demons and see other sinners of the same description in the same gulf. The device of Champolo, one of these, to escape from the demons who had laid hold on him. So, and that Champolo causes, I think, a couple of the demons to fall into the, into the pitch. There it is there. See that? He tries to get them and Champolo succeeds in, <laughs> in bringing them down. Interesting. Like the guards, a guard that is imprisoned in a, you know, in a prison. There you are. There. Now they've been taken down and the others can't get to uh, Dante and Virgil. They remain on top. All right. The un the enraged demons pursue Dante, but is preserved from them by Virgil. On reaching the sixth gulf, he beholds the punishments of the hypocrites, which is to pace continually around the gulf under the pressure of caps and hoods that are girt on the outside but led, 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 leaden within. He is dressed by two of these Catalano and Lodarigo, Knights of St. Mary, otherwise called Joyce Friars of Bologna. Caiaphas is seen fixed to a cross on the ground and lies so stretched along the way that all tread on him in passing. You can see the, the person who did this, who wrote this, unbelievable, huh? These are the, now, these are the, uh, are those souls there. They got, uh, they, they're dressed. Um, the, my water went on. Hoppla. They're dressed uh, on the outside. It's all gold, but on the inside, it's lead. Lead. That's pretty heavy. And they have to wear that because they were hypocrites. And this Caiaphas here, look. He, he, no, he not allowed his worst punishment for him. Canto 24. Under the escort of his faithful master, Dante, not without difficulty, makes his way out of the sixth gulf and in the seventh sees the robbers tormented by venomous and pestilent serpents. The soul of Vanni Fucci, who had pillaged the sacrilege, the sacristy of St. James in Pistoia, predicts some calamities that impended over the city and over the Florentines. Again, you know, when you study this, um, you, you have uh, 
uh, if you get a book, uh, you know, you get Dante's Inferno, these are the pictures. Notice all the serpents. Pretty horrible, isn't it? So there you are. More of them. Boo! <laughs> Scary. Yeah? So these are the sinners. That's what happens to sin. If you sin, that's what happens. The sacrilegious foot she vents his fury in blasphemy is seized by serpents and flying in pursuit by Cacus in the form of a centaur who is described with a swarm of serpents on his hunch and a dragon on his shoulders breathing forth fire. A poet then meets with the spirits of three of his countrymen, two of whom undergo a marvellous transformation in his presence. They sort of get cut up and then they come back again in the same way, sort of, you know, like in a circle. Okay, now this one here, uh, that's uh, going further down. That's how they've gone into the, the further down in hell. Like, you know, it's a mountain going down and down, like an ice cream cone, like a cone, ice cream cone, starting from the top, the large bit, and going further down. And, you know, it's like a, a mountain upside down. Canto 26, remounting by the steps down with which they had descended to the seventh gulf, they go forward to the arch that stretches over the eighth, and from thence behold numberless flames wherein are punished the evil counsellors, each flame containing a sinner, save one in which were Diomede and Ulysses, the latter of whom relates the manner of his death. The letter, the letter, not the Omede. And Ulysses relates the death of his death. Well, well you know, again, uh, you need to, to look into, uh, into the work itself. And so, so let's have a look at 28. They arrive in the... Oh, have I missed 20, 27? Yeah, I have to read this. The, the poet treating of the same punishment as in the last canto relates that relates that he turned towards a flame in which was the Count Guido da Montefeltro, whose inquiries respecting the state of Romagna he answers, and Guido is thereby induced to declare who he is and why condemned to that torment. It's an interesting one, that canto. Uh, and this is here. See the way they uh, they open up their wounds. They arrive the ninth uh, gulf where the sowers of scandal, schismatics and heretics are seen with their limbs miserably maimed or divided in different ways. Among these the poet finds Muhammad, Piero da Medicina, Curio, Mosca and Ber and Bertrand de Bon, Muhammad at the time was seen as a antichrist in the sense that he created a new religion away from Christianity. Therefore, Dante puts him in, uh, you know, quite down, uh, quite downwards towards, the, uh, close to the devil, pra practically, very close. Okay, and here they are. Oh, welcome to Tony Di Camillo. I'm showing the pictures of um, the illustrations by Gustave Doré of the Divine Comedy. Now, of course, you know, this is only a taste of what can be done when you study Dante. And I have the books, uh, Inferno, Purgatorio and Paradiso, but they are also accessible online and etc. But when you've got a book, you can just, um, yeah, it's easier, it's easier. And these are, look at that. That's another picture. And uh, the the summaries here are are in old English. I mean, you know, they're really quite old. Dante, at the desire of Virgil, proceeds onwards to the bridge that crosses the tenth gulf, from where whence he hears the cries 
of the alchemists and forgers who are tormented therein, but not being able to discern anything on account of the darkness, they descend the rock that bounds this, the last of the compartments in which the eighth circle is divided. And then behold the spirits who are afflicted by divers, plagues and diseases. Two of them, namely Grifolino of Arezzo and Capocchio of Siena, are introduced speaking. So to Dante, as he moves down downwards, he, he sort of talks to the souls and uh, they tell him their story, his story, well, their stories. Here they are now going further down. Let me have a look. Oh, more to come. Look at that. There's another illustrator that I've got books for. Uh, I really, Scaramuz, I think it's called. Another one. So this is the Dante. A study of Dante will give you the idea of the sins that can be committed. Now, Canto 30. Uh, I'll, I'll leave it there. In the same gulf, other kinds of impostors as those who have counterfeited the person of others or debased the current one, coin or deceived by speech under false pretenses are described as suffering various diseases, Sinon of Troy and Adam of Brescia, of Brescia mutually reproach each other with their several impostures. The sins, uh, here they are. This one here is one of them. And these are the others. Look at that. This must be Count Ugolino. <laughs> is he eating? I, don't know, I can't remember. This one here, look at that. Serpents, terrible stuff. Now this is a big picture. Wow. Welcome to Tony Angelino as well. Third, Canto 31. The poets following the sound of a loud horn are led by it to the ninth circle in which there are four rounds, one enclosed with, within the other and containing as many sorts of traitors. But the present canto shows only that the circle is composed with giants, one of whom, Antaeus, takes them both in his arms and places them at the bottom of the circle. Whereas the other giants around, around the, the, the well, they, you know, because they're going further down towards the devil. And these giants are looking, the, the, the big ones are chained. They, they can't move. But this one, Antaeus, uh, takes, he, he didn't commit a big sin against God, so uh, he, he's sort of left free so that now he can do a good deed and bring uh, Dante and Virgilio further down, or Virgilio and Dante. And these are the other two, uh, the, these are the others. See the chains there? These are the giants. The guards of, uh, you know, uh, the doors to hell. And that's how the giant picks them up and lays them down. Oh, welcome to Harry Varellas. Well, well done. I'm doing, uh, I'm showing Gustave Gore's uh, uh, illustrations of uh, The Inferno by Dante Alighieri. And, uh, you know, you can always go back and uh, look at um, look at these later. But for the moment, I'm just um, also reading uh, the summaries in Old English, of course. This is it here. See that? There's more. See those little heads? That's all eyes. Eyes. And Dante and Virgilio go over them. And one of them says, Don't, you know, <laughs> don't touch me because you're going to <laughs> hurt me. This canto treats of the first and in part of the second of these rounds into which the ninth and last or, or frozen circle is divided, into, is divided. In the former called Caina, Dante finds Camicione de Pazzi who gives him an account of other sinners who are there punished. And in the next named Antenora, he is in, uh, in like manner from Bocca degli Abbati who is his fellow sufferers are. So this is um, Canto 32, we're getting closer and closer to to the devil. There, that's where, see? 
And Dante becomes cruel with one of them. Uh, very unusual. But the, the idea is that when, uh, you know, divine justice means because it's justice, you can't be sorry for the people who are being punished because that's divine justice. You can't interfere. That's, the, that's really what... So Dante really shows a type of justice by, by doing that to that particular soul. Here we are. More of them. Now, we're getting towards the end here of the... Uh, of Yes, 33. The poet is told by Count Ugolino de Gerardeschi of the cruel manner in which he and his children were famished. Oh, I have to find another one. Hold on. Oh, gosh. They're all the same. Oh, well. Rotate. Yes. I can't. <laughs> uh, dear, dear, dear. Well, um, they're all the same. I can't rotate. Sorry, you have to look at it this way. Okay. The poet is told by Count Ugolino de Gerardeschi of the cruel men in which he and his children were famished in the Tower of Pisa by command of the Archbishop Ruggieri. He next discourse, discourse of the kind round called Cholomea, wherein those are punished who have betrayed others under the semblance of kindness. And among these he finds the friar Alberigo de Manfredi, who tells him of one whose soul was already tormented in the place, though his body appeared still to be alive upon the earth, being yielded up to the governance of a fire. That's unbelievable. I, you know, the English there is really, really old. That's Count Ugolino. And some people think that he ate his, uh, he ate his, uh, tr the, his the children. Because they were left to die of hunger. And one of the children said, since you made us, you created us, you can eat us. Very generous of him. There it is there. Again, more. What happens here? Count Ugolino dies, see? Quite a lot there. And this is now the end. So that was this part here. It's um, when Virgil and Dante uh, get, get out of hell. Let's have a look. In the fourth and last round of the ninth circle, those who have betrayed their benefactors are wholly covered with eyes. And in the midst is Lucifer, at whose back Dante and Virgil are sent till by a secret path they reach the surface of the other hemisphere of the earth and once more obtain sight of the stars. Okay, and he always finishes with, uh, with, with uh, the stars, see? Eh? Canto 34, you get, there's the devil there. With his wings. So they get around, the Virgil goes around him, and the others are all eyes. And he moves, uh, the devil moves, moves the wings, and that's why the, the waters are all eyes, cold. And that's once they go up his leg, they go and see the stars. Yes? Well, where's the... It's purging for the ascent to heaven. Prepares. Well, I don't know. Well, please, then, and for the second region, we'll sing. Well, I'm not sure here anymore. Canto 34, that's the one. So they're going to see the stars again. And that's it. That's, that's it. The next one is Purgatorio, which I won't do now, we'll do later.
So it's 11.58. It took me half an hour to do the lot. Uh, I, I apologize for the, you know, all the mistakes, etc. But the idea is for me, it was me, for me to actually show you, to actually show you the, um, the various um, pictures, the illustrations by Gustave Dore. You get an idea. It's not, you know, if you want to look at those, you, you have to find an appropriate book and proper illustrations. You can even go online and say illustrations by Gustave Dore and it'll give it to you, maybe. I'm not sure. I haven't done it. Uh, I've just thought about it now. So, that's, that's Dante's Inferno. Uh, the illustration's been done. Next week, I'll conclude about the Inferno and I'll move on. Okay, I'll go up to the devil's leg myself and get out and go into purgatorio so my discussions about the sins etc etc uh, will not stop because people in purgatorio commit sins but they also ask for forgiveness at the right time you must you must ask for forgiveness and you've got to be genuine in order for you to be able to you know get out of the prison of eternal sinners. A bit like what we do to our prisoners in jails. If they're good, they get out eventually uh, and they rejoin the, the rest of us. But they've been there, so they know, they're pretty tough. Okay, so that's that. Now, the next one is my, uh, are my poems. And the first one, I'll read the Italian first and then I'll read the English. The first one is vocazione, vocation. These are two books which I produced years ago and I should have done already about six or seven of them, but I've only two. Uh, I've got the second volume, the English one, and the Italian one I didn't publish enough, so I don't have many copies. Pity. But anyway, the... The poem that I'm going to read now is from Tom Padula, Vocazione, and it's about schools. Tutto appare rumoroso, eccitante, ma noioso. Sempre lo stesso con questi studenti che non vogliono far niente di quello che voglio io. <laughs> Ognuno vuole la libertà di agire, di fare, di conversare di altro e non di quello che si dovrebbe fare. Io voglio che parlino quest'altra lingua, che la leggano spesso e volentieri che la scrivano quasi quotidianamente che la amino ma no per loro è soltanto un'altra materia fra le tante che hanno scelto per evitare altre cose che gli interessano anche di meno della lingua italiana <ride> però il briciolo della speranza è sempre presente perché l'insegnante sa che il seme può rifiorire in altri tempi in altre primavere You put the seed in there, it can work wonders in time. Ed anche quando penso che abbia fallito, con il passare del tempo, questa esperienza a volte porta dei frutti veramente inaspettati. Così la natura di questa mia professione, di questa mia vocazione. And in fact, now I am teaching French in an adult class at the 3 UI at the University of the Third Age. Interesting. If you don't get them when they're young, you can get them later. But I believe that education is for life. It's not something you just do when you're young. Okay, vocation. Everything appears noisy, exciting, but boring. Always the same with these students who don't want to do anything of what I want. Everyone wants their freedom to act, to do, to chat of other things and not of what they should be doing. I want that they speak this other language, that they read it often and willingly, that they write it almost daily, that they love it. But no, for them it is only another subject amongst the many that they have chosen to avoid other things that interest them even less of this Italian language. So amongst all the things that they don't want to do, <laughs> they chose Italian maybe. But the grain of hope is always present because the, uh, the teacher knows that the seed can flower again at other times in other springs. 
And even when I think that I've failed with the passing of time, this experience sometimes brings some really unexpected fruits. So is the nature of my profession, of this my vocation. And it has been a vocation in a way, but I didn't know that. I didn't know that. I didn't think that I had a vocation for teaching, but never mind. I'm here and doing it. Okay, now in schools, and at Princess Hill especially, there was a guy called uh, Mr. Hamer, Professor Hamer, Mr. Hamer, and he was quite a character. Welcome to Nin Albert. Uh, he was quite a character. His name was Mr. Hamer, uh, Emil Hamer. And uh, then he retired, and I wrote a poem for him, and I read it, uh, you know, at uh, our meeting with food, etc., for the other teachers. And I said, I read it in Italian first, but it was written in English. Oimè, l'uomo è qui davanti ai suoi pari, guardando indietro lui può solo vedere il fiume di studenti, colleghi, genitori, cittadini ed altri su cui ha lasciato il suo indelibile marchio. Chi non si ricorderà del professor Hema per il suo linguaggio fiorito, la ricchezza della sua espressione e soprattutto per la precisione e il genio con cui cesella ogni nota, ogni discorso, ogni lettera. He had quite a, a flourish with his language. Non è sempre quello che dice che ti sorprende, è il modo in cui si esprime che ti sbalordisce. Quando si presenta nella tradizione di un Churchill o Dante, o forse Omero, quest'ultimo deve essere stato un parente distante, Haima, Oma, interesting. A Princess Hill ha la reputazione di essere un uomo di lettere, nella tradizione del filosofo e schietto nelle sue opinioni. Non ha paura dell'ira degli uomini, perché sono soltanto mortali. Dalla legge prende la sua posizione, a molti pranzi non ha resistito alla tentazione di divorarsi una buona quantità di fragole e gelato, cosparso con avvocati e signore e amiche. <laughs> He loved to talk to the lawyers and knock them from their pedestal. Per gli ultimi 18 anni a questa scuola ha indossato la toga di letteratura e storia, mentre nascondeva il vero se stesso di uomo di lingue e musica, sa mettere qualche motivo insieme, sa parlare qualche lingua, eh? sa qualche lingua, not, not inglese, olandese, francese, tedesco, un po' di italiano, spagnolo, spagnolo svedese, e non dimentichiamo le sue letture in latino e greco antico. Quite an erudite person. Emil si distingue nella sua comprensione dell'uomo universale, rialzandosi al di sopra del bigottismo dello sciovinismo. Tratta gli uomini e le donne senza paura o favoritismo. Non è conosciuto per la sua umiltà, ma poi tutti abbiamo qualche difetto o più. <laughs> and so that's the Italian one, but this is the English. And then that's, I wrote in English. Alas, the man is here before his peers. Looking back, he can only see the stream of students, colleagues, parents, citizens and others on whom he left his incredible mark. Who would not remember Mr. Heimer for the flourish of language, the richness of expression and above all, the precision and the wit with which he chisels every remark, every speech, every letter. It's not always what he says that surprises you, it's the way he comes across that astounds you. When he stands in the tradition of A. Churchill or Dante or perhaps Omar, uh, this last one must have been a distant relative. At Princess Hill, he has the reputation of being a man of letters. In the tradition of the philosopher, he is frank in his opinions. He fears not the wrath of men, for they are mere mortals. From the law, he takes his stance. At many a dinner party, he has not resisted the temptation of devouring a fair quantity of strawberries and ice cream sprinkled with lawyers and lady friends. <laughs> Se li mangiava tutti. For the last 18 years at his school, he wore a robe of literature and history whilst disguising his real self as the man of languages and music. He can put a tune or two together, he can speak a few languages, English, Dutch, French, German, a little Italian, Spanish, Norwegian, let's not forget his readings, in Latin and ancient Greek. Emil stands tall in his understanding of the universal men towering above the bigotry of chauvinism. He deals with men and women without fear or favour. He's not well known for his humility, 
But then everyone has a fault or two, including me, including you. We all have some little faults uh, which we don't share we don't share it with others, but others see in us. So other people can see our faults a lot better than what we can do ourselves. Okay, now that's that. Now I'm going to show you. Uh, I'm, today I've chosen to do uh, to present a person. Well, let me let me see if this comes up. No, I've got to do the same thing again. So yes, oh yeah, there it is. Wait a minute. I'll be one second if I don't get it wrong. There. Yes, we got it. At Federazione Organa, I met this gentleman called uh, Sandro Lemigrante. And I, I knew about him. Uh, I, I knew about him uh, from, uh, you know, his presence on radio. And, and they told me about uh, all his work in the clubs too. Quite a character. There it is. There, that's Sandro, Lemigrant. He's, uh, you know, still enjoys himself at the, oh, fortuna, le, 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 as a ballerish. Sandro Lemigrant, ti ho visto qui altre volte alla Federazione Locale, ma poi stasera ho saputo, ma lo sapevo già da prima, che tu parli parecchio di Alec. Eh, insomma, Lucita, sai, essendo stato in giro per l'Italia, eh, so, anche qui a Melbo io sono stato in Olidei a Fitzeroy, sì, sì. Bravo, bravo. Eh, 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 tu mi hai detto pure, mi hai detto sì. pure che tu eri qua da piccolo, da piccolo. Sì, sì, sì. Eh? E invece ah, adesso... Allora, quando sono venuto ero piccolo, avevo 70 anni. Sì. Quando sono 60 anni? 70, 70, 70. Quindi stiamo a posto, eh? Ah, e quindi l'Italia la conosci bene. Eh? Bravo, bravo. Ok, ok. Allora, c'è questo signore di dietro qua, però... No, noi no, 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 Ok, allora, questo è per cominciare. Yeah. Now, I'm not going to do them all in one hit. I'm going to give you a song first. Another song, let me see. No, 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 go back, Tom. Okay, now I'll give you a song. Here we go. We'll, do, we'll start with this one here. We'll start with this one. Here we go. La luna è tu, passano su gondole, placide fra i sogni d'oro, e non mi conta che con nostalgia sospira la canzone sua d'amore. Oh, 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 well. Never mind, this is what happens sometimes. I can't. No, no, I can't. I've got to go back. It's playing up. Sorry. No, no. I can't. So what I'll do, I have to play it again. But I don't really want to play it again. I'll try another one. And then we'll, we'll go back to we'll go back to Sandro Lemigrante. I hope that's it's unbelievable. The computer sometimes uh, does uh, plays tricks on me. <laughs> and uh, what do you do? What do you do? You have to <laughs> when you depend on it. It's a real problem, but it doesn't matter because uh, you know in our activities on daily activities we have to put up with the things that don't work out. And again, Sandro Lemigrante, I'm trying to get him and the computer's slowing down. One, one bring it up. So what do I do now? <laughs> what do I do? I'll tell you what I'll do. 
I will talk about the various things that you can actually do with um, uh, with uh, the Inferno. Uh, what you we can you know you can get the summaries of each canto one to thirty four, like I've done before. But in you can do it in your own language. Ma questo qua non vuole. The second thing is now i grandi personaggi, i grandi personaggi, characters of the Inferno. You can identify those, and that's uh, that's a study in itself. Uh, in each canto, there is a, uh, there are particular people, you know, people that Dante talks to, and Virgilio too. Very rarely Virgilio, but Dante does most of the of the uh, of it. Now, are we going to? I can't believe this. It's really letting me down this morning. This is really letting me down. But never mind. Okay, let's go on. Uh, you can read the poem about Inferno. Oh, yeah, there's uh, some people have done, uh, have written the Inferno story in their own words. Almost quasi cantando. So th that's what I've noticed. I've got a book uh, that does that. As well, now there are the illustrators and the painters and the songwriters, and I would say the filmmakers as well, the filmmakers as well. Now let me see if I, this comes on again. I can't. I, I just do not believe it. It won't do it. <laughs> oh dear, dear. Oh dear. Never mind. Tom, be patient. Okay, illustrates painters and songwriters. You can uh, Dante is a source of inspiration. Uh, the 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 thing that I've touched on is the life of Dante. The life of Dante Alighieri is important because uh, every writer uh, writes about you know you can use your fantasy your imagination, but you do write about about your own experiences in life in the times that you've lived. And that's what Dante is, uses his experiences and his studies at the time in order to do uh, these major works that have been left in history. Come on, computer, don't do this to me. Now, do you have fights with the computer? <laughs> oh, dear, dear, dear. Okay, so that's the life of Dante. You know, you'd have to look at when he was young, uh, his background, and then when he meets Beatrice, uh, the, you know, it, it was a love that he developed for Beatrice since he was nine years old. Welcome to Bart Sanciolo. Uh, the computer is giving me trouble this morning, so I'm waiting for the little ball to disappear and let me present you what I, what I want to do. <laughs> so I'm sort of killing time right now. So the life of Dante is important because uh, that will make you understand better uh, the artist, the writer, uh, because everyone in, uh, in life uh, has this journey and it starts in a particular period of time and it finishes at another time. In between, that's our life. And what we do in that period is important. And being able to maintain uh, what what Dante is saying is that listen, guys, you know you you have to maintain you have to maintain a, a good spirit and a love of other people. Now, if you follow the Christian religion, if you follow Jesus Christ, uh, you can get there, you know. But then look at what happens within his organization. That doesn't always happen. So uh, you, you, you have to, you know, you, in, the Dan, in, in Dante's Inferno, he puts Muhammad in, in hell. Because at the time, only a, couple, a few centuries later, he sort of upset the, uh, the Roman Empire, if you like, that spread up to India from Rome, Eastern and Western, Western and Eastern Roman Empires. Uh, they... they they had conquered everything in the time from uh, the fall of, uh, you know, the, when Rome, the Roman Empire, was um, invaded by the people that they had conquered. They called them the barbarians. And the, the two, the, the empire was split into two. But when Muhammad arrived, 
he was uh, incredible. Uh, there was a, there were a lot of abuses that the, the, uh, the Christians were committing. All over, the, they forgot about the people. So this guy comes and says, "Listen, you know, don't worry about all the gods there. They, you know, they made three gods. There's only one. You know, just got to follow me, and that's it. You know, bow to me and do what we say, and that's it. It's you and him. So that's why." That's why they say uh, continually, inshallah, this and that. And, uh, you know, we used to, when I was a child, in, in small towns in Italy, that's what happened as well. People, very religious in Italy, in the small towns. Some of them, and some of them then go the other way. So the, 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 the theology is important, uh, but in a practical sense. In a practical sense, the, the thinkers will do that. But some people follow, blessed are those who in ignorance uh, because they don't see. They, it's okay. You know, the minute you start doubting, you're in trouble. My name is Tom. I'm in trouble <laughs> all the time. Okay, so that's the theology. Now, that's the life of Dante. And you look at, because why what he did in, in Florence when he was younger and in politics and then... He was uh, expelled from Florence and became an exile, and he died at the early age of 56 in Ravenna. And his statue is still there, and his ashes are there. So, that's Dante. The mythology of ancient history and Greece of, and Rome, important to know uh, the, 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 the mythology of the gods that the Greeks and the Romans believed in, the variety of things, because some of them end up in hell. But some of them, uh, they can't go to purgatory or paradise, obviously. So probably that's the end. But I will find out, we will find out when we read Purgatorio, all this. Then you get the Christian theology and the distortions by leaders of the church. So some of the popes, they commit simony, they, they steal from the church. It's a sin. And if they're, they're popes, they still end up in hell. So that's it. Now, the list of sins and punishments. I wrote this in order to say, what do I say about the whole lot? The whole lot. Am I, have I got it here or not? Who is it? Here we are. Yes? Come on. <laughs> I don't believe this. I honestly don't believe it. What's happening here to me this morning? But I'm determined. No. I don't understand. Now, the computer has gone dead. <laughs> oh, well, I'll have to do without today. Come on. Be good. Come on. I'll show you. There. See the ball? One, let me. It won't let me. Never mind. Sorry, Sandra, we did only a little bit today. Never mind. We might be able to still succeed. Well, I'll still keep going. Now, the other one that... Um, so the list of sins and punishments which I've given you already... The next one was the rivers of hell and the citadel of Dita. You can do a bit of a study of that, the rivers of hell. There are a few of them. Do you know which ones? Do you know, you know uh, where, they, where they are in the, in the, in the actual uh, inferno, in the county? That, and the citadel of Dita. Why didn't the, did the... Oh... Why did uh, the, um, the devils not allow Virgil to take Dante in, house, in, in the city straight away? And they had to be saved by an angel uh, in order to get in further down, further down. Uh, oh God, it's coming up and uh, the computer is sort of, we never know, we might, it might come up, we'll see. Then there is also Male Branche, Male Branche, that's the, the ten canti dedicated to the sins we can all be subject to uh, during the course of our lifetime. This one's here, Male Branche, 
uh, speaks more directly about sins. All right, so... Yes, no. Oh, well, never mind. What about another one? Oh, gosh. I don't believe this. Okay. We can all be subject to during the course of our lifetime. Tom Padula interpretation of life on earth as inferno, youth, purgatory, middle age, paradise, etc. The, my take is that we experience the Divina Commedia in our lifetime here on earth. Because when you're young, when we are young, we do all sorts of things that uh, we have experience. Experience come from very different directions. We've got a lot of energy. We tried a lot of things and we learn things, etc., etc. But we don't really uh, understand. And therefore, you know, we sort of experience some of these sins ourselves. We see them in others. So that's in the, when you're young. Then as you reach middle age, you know, when your youth is gone, in your early 30s, 35, you start saying, now I remember when I was with that person there, when I was in that experience, when there was that event, these things happened to me. So you start questioning and directing your attention to the very sins that can be committed. Then you make a choice. Do you want to be a good person or do you want to be a bad person? And some people decide that being a bad person is a good thing because then it gets you notoriety. Whereas when you're good, nobody, people ignore you. And that's the problem. It's a problem. But if you choose the right path, that's the right path, then you, are, you, you get towards the end of uh, middle age and... And you sort of come out unscathed. You've done the right thing all along by people. You tried your best, etc., etc., etc. Okay, so you've done all that, and then you reach the third age. Early in the third age, it's like the beginnings of paradise, because you're no longer young. You've looked at all sins that you can commit. You know what to expect. Uh, the punishments that you can get as a result of wrongdoings, etc., etc., and therefore you live, you start living a more, a better life, a better life. I can't believe this. What's happening here? <laughs> oh, the computer has gone berserk. Here, oh, look, it's gone berserk. I haven't had this problem ever uh, up to now. Maybe it's trying to tell me something. Maybe it's trying to tell me something. Anyway, Paradiso is when you're in the third age. We are in Paradiso because we no longer work. Let's say you retire. You, well, if you've done well in life, you've got your own house, etc., etc. You're pretty well off. and That's a portion of the people. Some people don't have that. They haven't been able to manage that. So therefore, they, they still haven't got out of hell. But third age gives you wisdom. If you don't have those things, you say, why haven't I got those things? And you could start blaming others. Why didn't my parents you know, leave me all, all the goods, uh, material goods, give them to me now rather than wait? Uh, if they are 90 plus, you know, they still got all this... and. Why can't they help me? You can, but the bulk of the population in Australia, I'm talking about, and in Italy too, everywhere in the world, the ones who are well off, it's it's a sort of paradise, that that's it, because you can really go out and enjoy yourself, and it's important that you do. And the final thing, and I'm approaching. The end, and I haven't been able to work out the computer, so I'm going to give up now on this. Never mind. Okay. Uh, the, the other thing is the traitors on a large scale, people betray. Uh, the, the traitors, the Judas, you know, Judas uh, towards Christ. And you've got, um, you, you've got, uh, who else? Cain, Cain and Abel, you know, the fallen angels. 
as well, I mean, the archangel. That they, they, the devils were angels when they were in hell, when they were in their original state. And they went against the government, if you like. God is a government of the universe. So if you believe in that, uh, it's sort of, but you, we've got free will. And when people say destiny, destiny, that means you take away the our power of free will. So a study of Dante, according to me, is an important uh, is it's an important activity in the third age, because when I did it at university, I didn't ask myself all these questions. I only did the inferno, I didn't do purgatorio or paradiso, and then, you know, when I I hear people, have you heard of Dante now, or somewhere? Yes, I have. What do you know? Nel mezzo del cammino di nostra vita mi ritrovai per una selva oscura, and then nothing else. And that's so a study of the actual works is important. Now I've gone to the trouble, you know, being a bit practical. I'm a dreamer, but at the same time, a practical at the same time. And all artists are, you know, you you do you do what you can, and then. You, know, you still have to survive, so you have to make your sales. You've got to, uh, some people are very successful at it, some others are not. But the, the desire to do these things, or to contribute, if you like, uh, to create, is, remains within us. And yeah, I have the books now. I've, I ordered um, Purgatorio and Paradiso, and I had a bit of hell, but I, I, I had them from before. So they are all there. But I've only got a few copies. But as I said, you don't have to buy anything. You can also just go online and bring up whatever you want. And it gives it to you. But when you've got... I like a variety. I like the books. I don't like to just look at an image of a work of art. I like to have the work of art. But you can't buy them all. You buy one or two, whatever especially, you know, people who make things, and uh, that's it. Basically, that's it. I, I don't have much more to say. I hope that next week, I will, by, by next week, I'll be able to, uh, I'll be able to go back to, uh, to what I've been doing up to now, which is a, a very precise way of um, conducting my hour. And today has given me trouble. But it's 12.31, uh, I've spoken ad lib for the last 10 minutes. Forgive all the bits and pieces that you don't like, but, you know, I'll, I survive. And it's still... <laughs> the computer's still playing tricks on me. On that note, grazie della compagnia, uh, for those people who come on. Uh, during the week, quite a lot of people now are actually looking up insegna.com I have all of the uh, four hours podcast. There are four different podcasts each week, and they're all there except for the ones of this week uh, so far. So if you go to insegna.com, you go to the blog section, the, there is the podcast, and then there are the four categories, world history, uh, French and Spanish, Italian lessons, and Divina, Divina Commedia. And you can, you should go, if you haven't heard me from before, you should go right at the beginning of the Divina Commedia, come to one, onwards, you look at it one at a time, and you can do a study of it. Ci teniamo compagnia. Ciao. Da Tom Padula, from Tom Padula TV, on YouTube and in Senior Booksellers.